Eternal life is something you have, not just something you do. Next. The program you're about to watch is part of a free audio series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries, entitled Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s for free by entering code LIFE22 at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're continuing our teaching on the the subject of eternal life. And if you hadn't gotten the study notes yet, go to the website and download the study notes. They have all these terms defined. And we talk about life and death, different kinds of death, and what it means to have eternal life, to how to receive eternal life. And, uh, and so many of the details that we went into, the afterlife, the great throne, white throne judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, all of those things are defined in this teaching. And if you want the complete teaching, I would encourage you to get this free series. If you'll go to the website, look for this series, Eternal Life Versus Living Forever. And we're making the downloadable version of this free. Just enter the code LIFE22 at checkout. Enter this code LIFE22 at checkout and you can download this four messages to your computer and put it on all your devices and uh, it's my gift to you. And it's these audio series really are the crux or the heart of our teaching. When I study a subject and get it laid out and really get it to gel, then the next thing I do is go and to my media room and I make an audio series And so really they're the most complete version of the teaching. Later on, then I'll do it in a church or I'll do it on TV. But uh, you really, if you want the complete teaching, get this audio series. And there's no reason not to since it's free. We also have a bundle that we're offering that has this plus uh, all the TV uh, sessions in audio and video. That's 20. And then it also has my teaching on heaven and hell. It also has the study notes, and it has my message, Prepare to Meet Your Maker. So we call it the Eternal Life Bundle, and uh, that'll really be a blessing to you. And I've been surprised. You know, this just came out. While we're still filming, it's coming out, and we've gotten a huge response today even uh, on on this uh, offer and on this subject, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, These teachings are... I'm going to show you how important they are and, and how valuable it is. Uh, I never wanted this program just to just be an escape uh, from modern life. I think modern life is escaping from reality. We want to talk about reality on this program and give, that, give you that and, and fuel you with the most important vital fuel in the world, which is the Word of God and the teaching of God's Word. Uh, so we're not talking about politics here. I'm not speculating on the next election or what's going to happen with the economy or what's going to happen in Russia or China. We're not, we're not dealing with those issues here. We're talking about eternal life and eternal death. And it must be important because here uh, there's two different passages I want to start today's teaching with. And it's simply this, 1 John 5, 13, John said this, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So in John's thinking, it's important not only that you receive eternal life, but that you may know that you have it or be aware of it. And that's why I did this series to begin with. I was reading, this was a long time ago, but I was reading and, and some books and some material on eternal life, and I thought, you know, there is so much high-octane fuel in this material that I want to do a series on it because it strengthens the believer. And, you know, f- f- fuel and food have a lot of the same qualities. Uh, you may not think it has any contemporary value, you know, fuel or food. What does is, what is a, a fried egg have to do with modern life or life in the modern world, the computer age? Uh, what does it have to do with, with my, my daily job requirements? Well, it, n- not if you try to translate it that way. In other words, you can't use an egg to figure out a math equation 
but it'll sure make you feel better. It'll give you the strength to live your life, to do your job, whatever it is. And I see that in the Word of God and in the teachings that we do, and that is it strengthens believers to do whatever it is you're required to do. So this is my view of end times, and, and I'm actually going to do a series on end times, so I'm not a, opposed to that. But, but here's, my, here's my view on why we don't spend all of our time talking about what we think is happening and what we think is going to come. If we were to analyze it and figure every step of, of every government and every political you know, move and, and maneuver and what wars are going to happen and this and that, and we got it all settled, if we got it all out on a timeline, which is impossible because Jesus said no one knows the day or the hour, but if we got it really accurate and we laid it out for the next 10, 15 years, guess what? You're still going to have to live for the next 10 or 15 years. So since we can't lay it out like that, it's impossible. It's too shrouded in mystery on purpose. There are things that we can see, but there are things that we'll never be able to understand this side of it. Now, when we get to heaven and look back, it's going to make perfect sense. But now, some of the things that happen in our future are shrouded, and they're, they're hidden on purpose. Some of them will be revealed, but some we're just going to have to walk out. But either way, we're going to have to live a life, a Christian life, an overcoming life, and we're going to have to face resistance. And in order to overcome in life, you've got to have some strength on the inside. You've got to have some fuel some power, some strength resonating in your own life in order to deal with the issues we're going to have to deal with. So rather than try to figure it all out, I'd rather get people full of power, of revelation and knowledge and understanding in the Spirit of God and the power of God so that when it does show up, I'll give you a great example. God never told David he was going to face Goliath. He never said, David, in three months' time, you're going to face a giant and he's going to threaten your life. And it's going to be a very traumatic experience. And you're going to, I want you to kill him. And I want you to kill him with a slingshot. He didn't tell him all that. David just did his thing. He shepherded the sheep. He, he spoke in Psalms. He kept himself built up. And he was ready for whatever might come. And to me, that's the way to face modern life. It's not to figure it all out or to know what's going to happen next necessarily. If God wants to reveal that, that's fine. It's up to Him. But I want to make sure that whether we know what's going to happen or not, we're prepared for it. I'd rather not be in the opposite state where we know exactly what's going to happen and we're not ready for it. That's worse. So I can't always predict the future, but I can determine whether I'm ready for it and whether you're ready for it. And I believe God wants us to be full of the Spirit. He doesn't want us to be intimidated. Our hearts should not be failing us for fear of what's coming on the earth. We should be full of faith and full of, 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 of strength and full of the Word of God and ready to face every single day as it comes. Because no matter what comes, I can promise you this, Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. This is the victory that, that, that overcomes the world, even our faith. We're ready for this. We're ready to live life. And having said that, I've got a series coming up, and I'm very excited about it. And I'm going to call it the top five best kept secrets in the world. And I hope that at least one of these messages go viral because the world will be a better place. You know, I've seen a lot of things go viral, and it didn't make the world any better. It was just kind of, oh, wow, can you believe five million people watched that? You know, or whatever. It didn't change anything. But there are some things that I'm going to say in this series. It's just going to be five sessions. I'm going to put it on YouTube immediately. And, and I, I hope that at least one of those messages go viral because <laughs> the world will be a better place. I hope that at least one of those messages go viral because the world will be a better place if it does. So you could be looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. But that's my, my view. I want to fill you up with the Word. I want to I, I walk this next generation with you. I want to live out our lives together. We're here together right now. We face a unique set of problems, a unique set of enemies, 
uh, in this modern world, but it's not, there, you know, the answer's still the same. The answer always works. By faith, they conquered giants. By faith, they fought armies. By faith, we're going to deal with whatever issues that come at us uh, the same way they did it in the Old Testament, the same way they did it in the New Testament. Those things have not changed. So in the spirit of that, John said, I have written these things. What things? Well, the whole letter of 1 John. He wrote the whole gospel of John. He said, I've written these things to you that you may know that you have eternal life. There's some value in knowing what you have. There's value in knowing that you have in you eternal life or the life of God. That is, that is something that's valuable, that's helpful, that will help you live life. In Ephesians 1.19, Paul says pretty much the same thing. We started out this series with this scripture. It says, and what is the exceeding, he wants us to have a spirit of wisdom and revelation so we can know what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us, or many translations say in us. He wants us to know the power that's in us who believe according to the working of his mighty power. And I can tell you the power that's in you, of course, the Holy Spirit's in you, but another term that the Bible uses to describe the power in you is the word eternal life or the word life or everlasting life. It's the same thing. And John is the big teacher, revealer of this word. He uses it more than any of the other writers, uh, but it's a powerful concept. And I want to talk to you about what eternal life is. It's not just something we do but it's something we have, we possess. And, and that's, I mean, we started this whole series out by saying everyone lives forever, so that's not eternal life. Eternal life is not living forever. Everyone's going to do that. We all do that. Eternal life is something above and beyond living forever. It's actually a substance. It's something you have. It's something God gives to you. It's something that is imparted to you from God to you, and you have it now if you're a Christian. And evidently, it's useful to know that you have it. And uh, I want to stir these things up and, and just talk about it, because you don't have to get it. If you're a Christian, you don't have to get life. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to feel it. But it's important to know that you have received it. And so 2 Peter 1.4 helps us to define this. Uh, he says it this way. Peter says, By which have been given to us, exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. So Peter calls it the divine nature, becoming a partaker of the divine nature. And, and John calls it eternal life. Paul would call it being saved. Uh, Jesus called it being born again or receiving everlasting life. It's the same term. There's something that comes into you when you accept Jesus that is different than what you had before. And we define spiritual death as separation of the human spirit from the life of God or the presence of God. So eternal life would be the opposite. It would be a human spirit that is not separate from the life of God, but that, that contains it or receives it. We we use terms like this, like Jesus came into my heart, or I'm in him and he's in me. And, and all of these words are, are used to describe the, the, the miracle that happens to you when you receive Jesus. Life comes into you, the presence of God, the nature of God. If Peter calls it the divine nature. What, what, what is the divine nature? What does that even mean? It means that there's something in God that makes God who he is. It's his, his nature. It's righteous. It's holy. It's powerful. And that same thing comes in you. And, and uh, John calls it eternal life, or he uses the Greek word zoe, Z-O-E. And, and we're, we're using his terms and we're defining this so you can understand that eternal life is not just going to heaven. And it's not just living forever, but it's something that is imparted to your spirit. It's a noun something you have, not just a verb, something you do. And so Vine's dictionary, and we use this a lot, excellent dictionary of New Testament words, he defines zoe as this. He says it's used in the New Testament of life as a principle, life in the absolute sense. 
Isn't that something? It's, it's life with no, with no death in it. It's life in the absolute sense. It would be like light is, is light with no darkness in it. Like 100% light is light with no darkness in it. And so life, the, the life of God, is, is a substance with no death in it. it. And he goes on to define it as that which the Father has in himself, which he gave to the incarnate Son to have in himself. And it says that in John 5, 26. Jesus had life in himself, and the Father has life in himself. He gave the Son to have life in himself. And then, of course, he shares that life with us. Let me go on and, and read the rest of this before we, before we go on. From this life, man has become alienated in consequence of the fall. And of this life, men become partakers through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Eternal life, Vine says, is the present actual possession of the believer because of his relationship with Christ. So uh, you have eternal life. It is in you right now. And what's so amazing is it can be so, th this life is so powerful, it's so transformative, it's, it's so valuable, it's, it's so durable, and yet you don't feel it all the time. And in, unless you talk about it or read about it or meditate on it, you would never even know probably that you have it. But it's important to know that you do have it. And so um, uh, Zoe, this life is a substance. It's a, it's a nature. And, and when, it, when he uses the word eternal life, it simply talks about the quality of that life. It's, it, it never gets old. It never tarnishes. It never diminishes. A thousand years from now, the life of God in you is going to be just as fresh and new as it is right now. And you say, well, I wish I, I, wish I could feel it. Well, it, the, the reason we don't feel it is because it's in our spirits. It's not in our bodies. The life in your body, your body is getting older, or Paul says it's decaying. And I hate to use that word, but, but that's, what, that's what he's saying is that, that, that your, your physical life is, is, getting, is decaying. It's getting older. And there's no way around that. And the Bible doesn't promise that we won't get older. The Bible doesn't promise that our physical bodies won't either die or be changed because they're corruptible. But, but eternal life is in your spirit, and it's in your spirit right now. John 5, 26, let's just read it. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. So you can understand a lot of these scriptures now by looking at eternal life as a noun and not a verb. It's something you have. It's something God has. It's something Jesus has. And it's a noun rather than a verb. Uh, John 1, 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. That's really good, isn't it? In him, in Jesus, was life. You know, before uh, Jesus came, no one ever had life. They didn't, it didn't exist. So there was no light in men. But Jesus came, and in him was life. He was sinless. And so he had the life of God in his spirit from the beginning. In fact, he, he, he you know, had, had he not died on the cross and taken on our sins, I, I don't think he would have ever died physically. I think he would have lived on forever because his, he wasn't tainted with sin the way we are. But in him was life, and the life was the light of men. 1 John 5.11 says, This is the testimony that God has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. So John, in his gospel and in his letters, uh, really defines Christianity in these terms of life and death, more so than any of the other writers. And it's, it's neat that we can go ahead and see, uh, understand these terms and then read the writings of John and let them minister to us. He says it differently than Jesus said it or than Paul said it in his epistles or than Peter. We showed you Peter called it the divine nature. Uh, Paul called it being saved. Jesus called it being born again, and he did talk about everlasting life. But John primarily uses these terms, life and death, and he's talking about Zoe or the life of God as, as the possession 
of the believer. And so uh, even when we see Jesus talking about life, everlasting life, and, and, and life of God, it's in John, the, the Gospel of John, where John's actually the writer that introduces us to the term the new birth and, and, uh, and everlasting life. It's John chapter 3, and, and John was the writer of this. So he, uh, he really did capitalize on these, on these words and, um, and they mean more than simply physical life and physical death. They are applied to the Spirit and they take on a whole new meaning. Let me give you some more um, of these terms here in John. We'll go back to John 3, the Gospel of John, chapter 3. And Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. And he said in verse 15, Whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. So there you see death and life eternal life, or zoe, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish. Again, he talks about death, and he's not talking about passing out of existence here when he says perish. He's not talking about ceasing to exist. He's talking about living eternally separated from God. And on the other hand, if, if you believe in Him, you won't perish, but you'll have everlasting life, or you'll live forever in contact with God or with the life and nature of God in your spirit. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through Him might be saved. And then we'll go on to John chapter 6 and verse 40. And this is the will of Him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. That is uh, Zoe, eternal life. You may have it, not do it but have it. And so it's a, it's a divine nature that's imparted to the believer. And then here in John 20, verse 31, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. So he was summing up why he wrote the Gospel of John. He said, I wrote these things so that you could believe on Jesus and have life in His name. Isn't that powerful? I just love that. Paul said it this way, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. So here he says we will become a new creation. When you receive eternal life, Zoe, the nature of God, you become a new person with new life, a new nature. It's the life of God. And, uh, you know, I, I just I believe that talking about these things, meditating on these things, just puts spiritual meat on your spiritual bones. It helps you to realize that if we could see you in the Spirit, which we can't, but you would just glow in the dark. I mean, you have within you the very nature, sub, the substance, that which is in God flows in you. The Zoe life of God is in you now. It would help you just to say that. You know, I've got the life of God in me. We had a little charismatic chorus that, that went like that. I've got the life of God in me. I've got His love, His nature, and His ability. I've got the life of God in me. It's so powerful to, to talk about these things and meditate on these things. And to say, you know what? I'm a new creation. Old things have passed away. I'm not separated from God anymore. I don't live in spiritual death any longer. I, am, I have been joined to God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through faith in Christ. And, you know, one of the things that was very consistent throughout the writings of John, and we read several of them uh, just today, and that is this, that to receive everlasting life, eternal life, or that you may have life, it, the only requirement is to believe on Him. And, and John says, look, the whole, my whole purpose for writing this letter is that you may know that you have eternal life. Or in the Gospel of John we just read, he said that you, uh, that you here's, he said it exactly this way, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in His name. And so that's, that's the point, that's the purpose for writing all of the uh, letters that John wrote, is so that people would believe on Jesus and have life in His name. And you know, millions of millions of people have received the life of God through reading or hearing someone preach the writings of John in the Bible. Uh, it, it clearly shows the way to receive life, the life of God. 
And what a blessing to humanity. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Um, have you received that life today? You know, and that's another point that, that John made in 1 John 5. Uh, let me give you the scripture. 1 John 5, 13, he says it this way. He says, These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. So the question is, do you know that you have eternal life? You can know. And for all those people who say, well, you just never know. You just, you just do the best you can and you'll find out in the end. I mean, I'm better than most people. I'm better than some people. I'm not the worst person in the world. That's no way to go into eternity. You can know that you have eternal life. And uh, man, if you don't know that you have eternal life, or if you know someone who is in doubt, give them this teaching. Make it a gift and, and let them listen to this teaching because it, it, is, it is something you can know. And we must make that a priority. I mean, when I was just a boy, I thought there's one thing I want to know for sure. I want to know I'm going to heaven. And I did not let that rest until I had that knowledge. You can know that you have eternal life, that, you, that you're right with God, that you have the life of God. And, then, and you can live the rest of your life in that knowledge. And what a blessing, what a load that takes off your mind uh, to know that you have eternal life. So uh, hopefully these teachings are helping you. Uh, go back and get the study notes and review some of the scriptures that are written. That's really the heart of the teaching is all these scriptures that I have on, on life and eternal life. And they'll feed your spirit and strengthen you so that you can face whatever life brings your way. So once again, uh, if you haven't gotten the free series, go to the website, look for Eternal Life versus Living Forever, enter the code LIFE22 at checkout, and get your free downloaded copy today, and you'll be glad you did. Well, we've reached the end of our time today. Thanks for being with us. See you next time. Until then, remember this, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. Everyone lives forever but not everyone has eternal life. This knowledge is life-changing. In this powerful series, you'll learn what eternal life is, what it does, and how to get it. Call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time. Well, we're doing a, another partner drive right now. We're looking for another uh, crop of partners to increase our base. And if you've not partnered with us, and you'd like to, we'd invite you to go to the website or call the helpline. I would love for you to partner with our ministry for the next 12 months. We don't ask you for a lifetime commitment. We realize that you have other things uh, to do. But if you, you know, if you wanted to join with a ministry that is growing, that is reaching more people than ever, and we have great plans to take this teaching to a broader audience, uh, pray about partnering with us. If you would just call or go to the, the uh, website, to the partner page, you can see the different levels of partnership. You can set up a monthly uh, automatic gift or we'll send you an envelope. You could send a check every month. Uh, whatever way works best for you, we're willing to work with you. So visit the website, call our helpline. I'd love to hear from you today. I can't do this without people just like you, and I wouldn't want to. Join us next time for Good News with Greg Fritz.